Welcome back to the shooting channel. If you're a lady or young person that is looking to get into shooting, this film is going to be for you. I'm with two ladies here. One of them has done a lot of shooting and one of them has done a little bit of shooting. We're going to have a little chat here on the sofa and then we're going to go out with the Yield It's FPZ, the new adjustable comb one, and we're gonna look at the good points and the bad points about getting ladies into shooting. So I've got Ella and I've got Emma. So we'll start with Ella first. How did you get into shooting and why do you want to get into it? Why do you want to shoot? Um, I have been interested in shooting ever since um, I was quite little. My parents were involved in shoots on estates yeah. and also um, with my work, um, we went on to on a Christmas shoot um, and I really enjoyed myself and decided that it's something that I'd like to get into. And what was the first things that you came up because it's a very male dominated sport and for the viewers out there for a lady that's never even thought about shooting before it's quite hard to get into so there are sort of ladies shooting clubs there are shooting schools like octagon company that specialize in shooting um, and teaching people to shoot or teaching ladies to shoot um, from a lady's point of view can you explain to the viewers if you're a lady that's watching this how you how you would sort of overcome that male dominated bit and get into it i first did a lot of googling to see whether um there was um, a lady instructor in my local area or um, a gun club that specialized in shooting for ladies um, and that's as basically as far as i've got so far yeah. so that's at the point where and to be fair there isn't a lot out there so meeting emma um through work it's yeah. probably been really good because she's introduced me into lots of different areas that ladies can be involved in to get into the the shooting okay and emma so tell us a little bit about you've done quite a lot of shooting yeah um i hear you're quite a a champion shot i won't um, go that far <laughs> just explain to us how you got into it and what interests you in shooting yeah so my kind of story goes back a long way i've had uh, extensive family in agriculture and gamekeeping. I think that's where the initial interest was sparked, really. Um, my dad's also a clay shooter. He shoots English sporting. Um, and it went from those kind of early days watching him. And then I uh, started shooting a 28 ball. I had a couple of lessons when I was about 10 or 11. And then sort of uh, just f followed on with my dad, got a 20 ball, uh, moved on to a 12, started shooting CPSA, English sporting competitions. Um, 18, I decided that I wanted to try something else, so I started shooting Olympic skeet. Um, so I met a lot of new sort of friends there. And then from there on, I've just been sort of intertying the, the two, so English sporting and Olympic skeet, and that's where my sort of main interests lie. And obviously we'll come on to your Olympic um, sort of journey later date, because obviously the Olympics is where is my heart, because I shot double trap. But... As you first started, just to help Ella and help new people into it, yeah. um, what can you say about people going and having lessons? Because I had um, a lady to come up and she'd been somewhere else shooting and she was almost put off shooting because A, she didn't hit a lot and that's the biggest, most important thing is they need to hit something and B, it bruises. So how can you sort of overcome that from a lady's point of view? Yeah, so I think there's a, a, a quite a few factors that need to sort of be taken into consideration with someone like yourself, Ella, and I think, you know, finding someone that you get along with not only as an instructor for their, their, their ability to t teach you technique, um, but also as a person. Um, so you need to be able to gel with that person. Mm -hmm. There's no, no point in being instructed by someone that you can't have a real, you know, personal sort of relationship with. Yeah. Um, obviously, having a good array of, of guns to to their to their name will be, you know, in a, a real hand um, for you. Obviously, not not everything works for everybody. Mm, yeah. um, something like this here, this shield, it's SPZ. That could work for a number of people. Perhaps for someone else, they might like to try something a bit different, i.e. 
a Yield It Pro. It's all about, you know, personalising and tailoring everyone's journey to themselves. And I mm. think for you, that will be really important in, in looking on your journey and, and being advised and getting sound help from people in the know about all of the holistic elements. What equipment do you need? Getting licensing, gun storage, help with ammunition, all of those things. And, and even boils down to things like pricing. I think that's something that some mm. people need to know a lot about when they first endeavour to start shooting because it does mount up and mm. people do need to know. And you don't actually have to. A lot of people look at shooting and from a new person's point of view, some people don't have that massive amount of money to actually put into it. But I always say to people, you see, you need to set yourself a budget. You can actually get into shooting for eight or nine hundred pounds. So you can buy a gun for six hundred pounds, something like a Yield It's SPZ. You can have a lesson. Most shooting schools will get yourself. And this is why I always say, if you buy a gun from a shooting school, most shooting schools will offer a free lesson, something like that. A skeet vest, not very expensive, 50, 60 quid. Um, so it doesn't have to be expensive, does it? No, you have to kind of be sort of savvy, do your research and, and, and know what you're kind of looking for when you go into a shop or a gun, uh, a shooting school or something of that, that nature. And finding people around you that are interested in shooting, I look, we've built our yeah. relationship and I've been able to advise you on different points. And, and that's really important. So if people can find friends who are doing similar things, there you go, and you, you've made a, a friendship there that will go on to benefit you in the long run. Okay, Ella, so before we go on to the range, what we'll do is we'll um, have a look at this gun fit for you. We'll, I'll sort of have a look and see where your eye is looking okay. as is, and then we'll make any adjustments as necessary. As I said, with this gun, we're able to put cast on, so to move it over left and right if you're seeing down one of these sides of the rib, because what we want to see is your eye going just straight down this and seeing that bead at the end. Okay. And then we can also adjust the height. So if your eye is looking very flat on the rib or if you're seeing lots of gap between the bead and into oh, the sky, yeah. we can move that for you. And then what we'll also get you is some accessories. We need to get some ear defenders, some glasses and a cap for you and then a skeet vest. And then you'll be able to keep your cartridges in your pockets. All right. So just come outside onto uh, the range, Oxford Gun Company. Um, what we're going to do is just have a little shoot with Ella. Um, first target we're going to have a look at is a little incoming target. Um, so Ella is just going to come out uh, from the left and it's just going to come up and sit at the top. So if you want to just call, pull when you're ready. Pull. Okay. Yeah. Right, so if you would like to take the gun, just place it over the, the barrier there. You can go forwards a little bit if you like. So when you see the target come out, it's gonna rise, rise, rise. And then when it stops, it will kind of sit still. Okay. And then where you want to place the bead on the end of the gun <laughs> is at the feet of the target. Okay. So imagine it had little, little feet hanging off. That's where you want to shoot at it, okay. okay? And just over to the right hand side. So if the clay was like a clock face, mm -hmm. you'd be shooting at about five o'clock. Okay. okay. Pull when you're ready. Pull. Okay, so you're just going over the top of it at the moment. Okay. All right. So if you just remember <coughs> when you're shooting, just to keep your head down on that stock. Yeah. I so I think when what you're doing is I'm you're it seeing up. it and lifting yeah, your head up. Yeah. Cool, when you're ready. Cool. There we go, lovely. Okay? Yay. Yeah? <laughs> so same thing again. See it come to the top and then five o'clock, yeah? Yeah. Cool, when you're ready. Cool. Lovely, there we go. So that time you just took the top edge of that. So just waiting for it just to come up and then when it reaches its peak, 
just five o'clock okay. and then you should get it. Okay? Pull when you're ready. Pull. Lovely, that was perfect. So that was bang in the middle. Okay, perfect. So I, th I think in the earlier part of the footage um, with when we when we took Ella out, what, what you'll be able to see is that uh, on some of the earlier targets, she was just lifting her head slightly as she was about to pull the trigger. So that's a point that I raised with her just to ensure that contact in the shoulder and to the face. And then once she, she had that, then she was um, centering those clays. So no, I think with everybody, it's just an easy thing to do is just to lift off it, anticipating the recoil. But if, you're, if your gun is, is fitted correctly, then then you will not you will not suffer from here or here. And the other thing that you were doing, which I do very much on ladies, is you put your hand there just to keep their weight forward. As soon as their weight comes back, that's when it hurts as well, doesn't it? Yeah. So just about you know keeping the weight on the front foot. Um, as I said with you, if we just put the hand behind just to support. Um, obviously, we're not holding you forward, mm. but it's just a light support there, just so that in in anticipation of the recall, your weight's not already back because mm -hmm. that will push you back and it makes the gun move about in this area. So when you just shoot, you just keep that weight forward. I can keep that hand there. And that's a common thing for instructors to do with people who are new to shooting, just while they get their dimensions and observations with how to balance that weight when, when the shot goes off mm -hmm. and that brings all of this area back. But that's something that will come with time. So, you know, after a few shots you'll all learn to understand yourself that the importance of keeping that weight forward so that you don't get affected by that recoil. Mm. And if, if you are a lady and you are thinking of taking it up, we'd love to hear your comments below and comment. I, are you looking for a shooting school? Are you looking for somewhere to learn to shoot? Comment below. And one of us, I'm pretty sure even one of the girls might even be able to comment as well back. Or email the channel, contact us at the shootingchannel.co.uk and we will do our best to push you in the right direction to help you find that comfortable person and comfortable place to learn to shoot.